Here we are in Quinn, County Clare, and the church we just saw is the Church of St. Mary's at County Clare. Now, in town, in Quinn, there are three churches, and Mass is celebrated at different times at each one. So there's an 8 at one, and a 9 at another, and 11.30 at that one. Well, well, we'll talk about that some more when we visit the church during Mass. And now we're approaching Quinn Abbey. It goes back in history. I'm going to give you the history in a few seconds. But it's a very beautifully, dramatically lit abbey. It's in ruins. And the reason for that is our friend Henry VIII, who took over the monasteries when he took power of the Catholic Church in England and Ireland. So let's go closer to the abbey and get some documentation. We're approaching the Abbey. On the outside of the Abbey and the ground surrounding it is a cemetery. People going back to 1700s being buried here. The monastery was active for many years until the dis dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII. Now we're going to go a little closer and see some of the ruins it's not operating as an abbey any longer. It is in ruins, but beautifully preserved by the state and rather nicely lit in the evening. Around 1280, Thomas de Clare, Lord of Tomno, built a strong castle on this site. It had a large square courtyard with a cylindrical tower and four corners each had a tower. Six years later, the Irish attacked it left it, and in the words of a contemporary observer, quote, a hideous blackened cave. The castle remained in ruins until the McNamara family brought over the Franciscan order into Quinn to found the abbey. The church has a nave, which is the main section where the congregation worshipped, a chancel where the altar was situated, and a tower that spans the chancel and the nave. The cloister and the other buildings around it, where the friars lived, worked and prayed, and are located in the north of the church. In 1541, Henry VIII solved the friary in his campaign to control the wealth and power of the church, but several friars, described as old, helpless men, still lived there in the buildings. In the early 17th century, they were still there. The last friar of Quinn, John Hogan, died in 1820 at 80 years old. Let's approach the Friary of Quinn closer. Here we are outside the Friary looking into the cemetery. Plots that go back to the 1700s and are also very contemporary as well. So this is still used by the community of Quinn to bury their dead and memorialize their family members. As we continue our journey, let's go inside the church. Let's enter the sanctuary, the chapel of the Friary. Here we are as we enter the main door, we would be in the nave, the main body of the church. Obviously now it's used for burial and preserved as ruins. As we glance toward the entrance and the main focus of the church, the altar, we see the two side altars. And then our eye goes up and we see the bell tower, which spans the area from the congregation into the sanctuary. And then we glance into the sanctuary. The altar still stands against the rear wall and the bell tower, not operating as a bell tower, but still operating as a beautiful part of the structure. We notice on the side walls of the church, pedestals, that probably held saints and statues. 
And on the right, a wide open area that leads into the other aspects of the church, including the gathering places for the monastic community. If we glance over to one section of the wall, we see the indented area that would have been the baptismal or holy water font. Very interesting. The structure of the church is neo-Gothic, and originally then it was built in the Gothic style. We are in the Abbey of Quinn. St. Mary's Church is adjacent, and we are in Quinn County Galway, excuse me, County Clare, adjacent to County Galway, Ireland.